Hey everyone, here's your complete guide for the Prophecy Dungeon. I've split this video into two parts. The first half is where I'll be discussing the main mechanic and how to beat each encounter. It's pretty simple, so it shouldn't take me that long to cover the entire thing. And the second will be the locations of the 12 urns. If you're just here for those collectibles, check the description for the timestamps. Also, I thought I should mention this, but aside from the urns, there's one special triumph for finding stuff in the dungeon, and that's called Emissary Whisperer. In the Wasteland section that you'll see later on, you can sometimes get dialogue at each location from the Emissary, but the Triumph is either not unlocked yet because of some future content, or it's bugged, so when we have an update on this, you can find that info in the description. The dungeon has a recommended power of 1040, with the final encounter being 1060, and it's completely made up of Taken, so if you can, I would definitely equip the mod Taken Barrier, and then maybe take in armaments for the final encounter, since that's the only time I had heavy ammo troubles. I would highly recommend running two major resist mods and a concussive dampener mod for some significant damage resistance. If you have the oppressive darkness mod unlocked in the artifact, that's also a huge help. Loadout wise, you're going to end up running what you'd usually run in the Pit of Heresy dungeon, which for me includes Mountaintop, Anarchy, Xenophage, Recluse, 21% Delirium, Divinity, etc. At the end of this walkthrough section of the video, I'll briefly cover the rewards, but for now, let's get to explaining. There's pretty much only one main mechanic in this dungeon, and that is the player's ability to create light and dark modes by killing a Taken Knight. Depending on where you're standing, you'll either have a light or dark aura at the bottom of your screen. Standing in the light gives you the light aura, and standing in the shadows gives you the dark aura. When you have one of these auras, killing a Taken Knight will drop that kind of moat. Note that you do not have to be in the light or dark area the entire time, you simply have to have the aura when you get the final blow on the night. From the moment that you collect your first moat, you'll have 30 seconds to get 4 more of the same type, and when you have a total of 5 either light or dark moats, you'll pop into third person and then have 30 more seconds to dunk all of that into the corresponding beam, which can be accomplished by pressing the fire button, so either left click or right trigger depending on your input. So stand in the light while you're killing one of the knights to spawn light motes, stand in the shadows while you're killing one of the knights to spawn dark motes, collect five and then dunk them into the correct beam, and that is the entire mechanic. Do this several times to open the doors in a tunnel section and you'll find yourself at the first boss. Here is the exact same thing as before except now you're contained to a circular platform with scions and an immune boss in the middle. Dunking the correct motes and extinguishing all of the beams will begin your first damage phase, which is generously long, and against a boss that isn't as tanky as you'd expect. My team was able to two-phase him on day one, without a single person being above 1018 power, so it shouldn't take you more than two phases. Just make sure to clear the Taken Goblins immediately if they try and make the boss immune. In this encounter, it's very helpful to keep moving, keep running around, and keep using cover whenever you get the chance. I found it pretty easy to sneak by the boss and avoid his phalanx attack. It's mainly the scions and the knights that are going to be an issue. So if your team is fine on DPS and you want to have someone dedicated to clearing those scions, bringing Risk Runner here is not a bad idea. The next area is the Wasteland, a sprawling desert that holds the four locations that will be nuked out of the game in September. Io, Titan, Mars, and the Leviathan, which is represented by a Nessus structure. Your goal here is to find the Taken enemies near the Blights, destroy said Blights and all of the enemies around it, and then find the next location where they spawn, rinse, and repeat. It's just an encounter where you gotta kill a bunch of stuff. Starting from the spawn area, let me show you how to get to the secret chest. Once you've cleared all the enemies in the wasteland, you can now make your way to the doorway of the giant structure and begin the hexahedron encounter, or what I like to call the escape room. When you begin this encounter, you should look around the room for the spark of light you've been following the entire dungeon so far. It's going to be on one of the four walls with a beam underneath it. 
Find where the spark is, collect the motes corresponding with the beam under that spark, and then dunk those motes into that beam. When you do extinguish that beam, the middle plate will become a lift that everyone needs to stand on to activate, causing the game to spin the room around and get you to the next area, which will also light up a symbol on the cube in the middle. If the spark of light is on the ceiling above the cube, find a side of the cube that has no symbol on it and dunk the motes on the wall facing that blank side. Repeat this process until all sides of the cube are lit up with a symbol, and you'll eventually land in the room with two Centurion bosses. Defeat them, and that's the entire Hexahedron encounter. From here, you'll go through another Wasteland section, following the immune boss until he leads you to the Sparrow slash Jumping Puzzle section, which is pretty straightforward as all you have to do is get to the bottom of it. At the end of the Sparrow Racing section, there's also a second secret chest. Here's how to get to it. Survive that and you'll arrive at the final encounter, the Kel Echo Boss. Like the previous encounters, you once again have to collect 5 motes of a single type and dunk them in the corresponding beam. Doing so will cause an ogre to spawn which you should quickly kill and then repeat that 2 more times. Once the boss flees and all 3 ogres are dead, you can hop in the middle triangle platform and you'll fall down to the damage phase room. As soon as you drop down, begin damaging the boss. The goal here is to keep up continuous damage while staying inside of the circle that surrounds the boss, since being outside of it will give you something called Dark Entropy, which will kill you if it reaches 11 stacks. Staying inside the circle near the boss will remove the stacks of Dark Entropy and prevent you from dying, but make sure to avoid getting hit by the boss as well as to avoid the boss's blight attack, which if it hits you will send you backwards. Continue chasing the boss along the platforms and take out any hobgoblin snipers that you can. The damage phase is pretty long but the boss has a ton of health so make sure to pace yourself. When the boss leaves, all three players must once again be standing on the exit platform to leave as well. It does not seem like there is a limit to the number of damage phases, but of course the fewer the better. Extinguish the beams with the motes, kill the ogres and damage the boss and repeat this until the boss is dead. As for rewards, there are two full armor sets per character. One of them is the Trials of the Nine armor from year one, and the other is the new Dido armor set. More often than not, it seems you're likely to get a pretty high stat roll on the armor. Most of my armor came with an above 60 stat roll. Included are also the Ikelos hand cannon and Ikelos shotgun, Widow's Bite, Death Adder, Huskow, and Negative Space, all with random rolls. The loot is also farmable, so you can do more than one run on the same character, but it appears that you'll only get the same armor that you got on your first run of the week for that character, either that or people are just having really bad RNG. So overall I think this is an awesome piece of content. The motes mechanic is something new and something more unique than just dunking void orbs, which is refreshing, and that in combination with the encounter spaces that are out of this world, literally, more than makes up for the fact that the main mechanic is simple and repeated a lot. Even if you skip this season and don't play anything else, at least level up enough to play this dungeon. It's free to play so you don't need to pay any money, and I know the power grind really sucks and is super boring, but it is totally worth it for this experience. The remainder of this video will be the locations for all of the collectibles for the Earn It Triumph worth 100 Triumph score. I would love to kill you. You asked a question. Welcome to the answer.
Guardian down. 